So one of the interesting things about Battletech is this idea of combined arms, where you have mechs, tanks, infantry, air support, artillery, fortifications, and if you have the appropriate map, naval units all interacting with each other. And in this podcast, in this vlog, I want to explore the use of tanks, ground units, infantry versus mechs, and uh, some of the advantages, some of the disadvantages, some of the lessons that I've learned in playing Battletech and exploring this idea of total warfare. Now, naturally, there is no right or wrong way to play Battletech. And in the narrative, of course, the mechs, the mech warriors, they, they are the stars. I love mechs, but I also love tanks. And certainly many battles are mech versus mech, and that's a great way to play Battletech, and we can explore that narrative for a long time. But as soon as you open up the total warfare... And you say, Fritz, you've got 4,000 battle value. Spend it on what you need. Spend it on what you like. Obviously, if we can buy point to point versus maybe a specific mission, attacker, defender, recon type thing. Or if you're really going to the narrative, exploring the different houses as exposed to mercenary companies where there might not be certain units available. I mean, you can certainly approach Battletech from a more historical war game as opposed to a sci-fi type war game. So you're in charge of a couple of tanks, you've got a couple of stands of infantry, and you've been ordered to go up against mechs, the most fearsome battle machines ever created by mankind. Can we do it? Think of the glory, if you can achieve that. Think of the taking these mech warriors, these smug mech warriors, and casting them down into the ranks of the dispossessed. If that alone does not capture your narrative and motivate you, Well, that should be enough motivation. So one of the things that we're looking at, and of course we go into greater detail of explored mech tactics versus tank tactics, but the equation that is always running in my mind is tanks based on weapons, based on tonnage, based on ability, are are generally less expensive than mechs. I can't necessarily engage two to one, but I can engage one and a half, one, one and a half to almost two against a mech. So for battle value to battle value, you're going to get more bang for your buck, literally speaking, as mechs. Infantry, you need infantry support with tanks because there's a couple of limitations we're going to look at. And in my infantry podcasts and vlogs, there's really never any reason not to take infantry. I mean, two or three stands of regular foot infantry, a full platoon, nothing special, is is going to run you nothing in terms of battle value. And just what it brings in a defensive game or in terms of accompanying your mechs, it opens up so many tactics. I mean, you can find a couple of hundred battle value to make it happen, but with tanks, it becomes a necessity. Now, the biggest challenge with tanks, when you're going against mechs, motive hits. Sure, just like in Battletech, you can get a crit, and a tank could explode or something crazy could happen. But generally speaking, what happens is more and more you start grinding to a halt with taking motive hits. Your speed becomes less and less and less until you finally become immobilized. Now, certain tanks are faster than others, and you can think of that as kind of a running tally where as you take motive hits, eventually it's going to reach a point where if you're moving one to three hexes, now you're moving one hex, that tank is almost out of action. Some of the heavier tanks, like the Behemoth, I, you know, we find something that moves as slow or slower than an urban mech. If you're moving at full speed, three hexes, you can't afford to take any motive hits on there. So we're going to look to um, negate that as best as possible. The one tactic that does that, true to all tank warfare, based on the damage chart when you roll, you need to keep the forward facing going. We really have to do the best we can to make sure that we're not attacked from the left or to the right where those treads or those hovers or those wheels are exposed on there. We need to be aware of light mechs or air units or other aspects of your opponent's lance or army coming and cutting into that side. So I either need to cover those sides or at least make sure as best I can that I'm facing my opponent, my tanks to the mech. Terrain is absolutely key. Now, with a battle mech, its legs, it's moving. I was going to say two legs, but we have stuff like the Goliath and the Scorpion. Terrain is more about getting cover. 
I'm sure it could slow you down going up a hill. Sure, there's elements where you might have to make a, a pilot check. But for the most part, terrain is an afterthought in terms of tactics. With a tank, terrain becomes paramount. Where you engage is so important, almost to the point, and I have to be careful of this personally. My player personality is one of glory. My player personality is, um, you know, I believe in being hostile, agile, and mobile, moving forward through there. So I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to engage. I'm going to attack. But even with that play style, there are times when I know I can't afford to engage. Because in two or three turns, I'm going to get ground down, I'm going to get immobilized, and I'm going to be in trouble. So I want to utilize terrain for my tanks. And yes, certain terrain can slow down tanks more. And yes, you're going to try and get those cover modifiers. I mean, we want those. But it's more about where can I engage and protect myself from the left and the right, and, and certainly the rear, no doubt there. I mean, getting attacked with the rear of a mech or a tank is, is doubly bad on there. So what terrain features on the table, that's going to be my attack way in that's what i'm going to look obviously if it's an open field well i'm in a massive massive disadvantage on there we never want to attack out in the open this is why for the converse um, in city fight tanks become more valuable than mechs tanks become brutal in city fight because the nature of all these alleys and different avenues they're going to prevent a mech from attacking the sides there's you can go into buildings you can hide you can ambush you can it's pretty dangerous if you're a mech entering a city defended by dedicated motivated infantry and tanks so we're going to try and keep ourselves far forward far facing now tactically tanks versus mechs i need to be more aware of the possibility of physical attacks um, mechs stepping on tanks or making charge attacks or physically attacking a tank a, I have no way to strike back on there, and B, um, mechs are more maneuverable on tanks. If they're that close to one hex, they will possibly be able to get to each side. So I need some way to keep mechs at this buffer of one to two to three hexes on there, a little bit further out. Now, of course, again, if they're that close, they're going to be lighting me up with tons of medium lasers and, and short-range missile packs and everything, but I'm going to be lighting them up too. This is where the infantry are key. This is where, for the battle value, um, two, three, four stands of infantry accompanying your tanks, getting dug in into that contact point or um, running through terrain next to those tanks, they're going to throw up um, a web, literally, of, of interlocking, interlocking hexes on there. And the damage that infantry can do, while it's not earth-shaking, gives you a lot of different cluster hits. It's going to give it a lot of hits over a wide variety of areas and uh, almost crit fishing against mechs. There's also the very real danger when that order is given, and I've given that order many, many times. I, I routinely fill my infantry ranks from the narrative, um, dedicated to the cause, of course, but at least 25%, I try to recruit my infantry from the ranks of the dispossessed with the standing order if one of those men can climb into the cockpit of a downed mech, they claim it. They get it, or we'll give them the, the credit value on there to do so. That type of motivation means if you bring your mech within a hex or two, depending if it's infantry or jump infantry, I'm going to launch a swarm attack. I'm going to totally charge. Um, on the converse, on a related note, I will routinely load up Karnovs with dedicated jump infantry, and they will pour out of that. I'll do a hot drop as I fly over and just drop onto those swarming attacks. And in a previous game, I believe we got the rules right. It, it took us a while. Um, this was against a clan invasion, and I, I dropped on some, some infantry, you know, made it on their swarming attack. We, we realized that the mech I was attacking did not have any hands, right? So... It was, I think it was a mad cat. Ha has no hands. So how is it going to swat that infantry off? And correct me if I'm wrong, from what we found out, you basically had to go prone. So this mech is like literally throwing itself on the ground and, and thrashing itself. And the infantry did a, a minor amount of damage. But for two or three game turns, I took that mech out of the game. That's, that's what it was doing, trying to swat that. So your infantry web, your infantry swarm, whatever that's going to be, that is the motivation to keep those mechs pushed away. And uh, again, being extremely hostile, extremely aggressive, 
They're pushing forward if they come into that. Now, what type of vehicles to take? This is where now we're getting into specific tactics. But again, the, the combined arms, just as we have lances that complement each other, with tanks, we need tanks that can complement each other. And, and by tanks, I also mean hovers and wheeled vehicles. The difference here from what I've discovered on the tabletop, on the battlefield, I can go with a specialized lance of mechs and use the guaranteed mobility. Obviously, if you get your leg blown off, that's... Well, the guaranteed mobility, as long as both of my legs are working, to redeploy the, that lance. Um, when I have my fire support lance of two longbows and two archers, it stays in the back, it shoots out. If something approaches, it goes to redeploy. I'm, I'm not going to engage other than indirect fire or uh, attacking my opponent um, face on with that. You can do that. You can have a specialized lance and use the mobility. Tanks, because of their facing, what I need to have, the potential for motive hits, having a, a specific unit without accompanying pieces and infantry, I find it doesn't quite work. So we need the real combined arms in there. Two considerations when selecting your tanks. Now, naturally, just like mechs, um, we have our favorite vehicles. We have our favorite tanks. Um, one of my favorite tanks is the Demolisher, because you can have your tactics, you can have all your fancy back and forth and battle plans. When I roll up there with six to eight AC-20s, you can't argue with big guns. You, you, you can't. Of course, the challenge here with such a short-range tank, can I deliver that? That's a separate question. But the thing that we're looking at for the tanks are a turret. In my opinion, having some sort of turret. So this way, if I do get immobilized, essentially it's a bunker slash pillbox, pushing the range out as best as it can. And likewise, if I'm advancing forward, I want to keep that forward facing towards the incoming mechs, but if something is flanking left or right, I can at least turn the turret. You know, maybe I have some front-facing weapons on there. So selection with a turret, um, especially with the main weapons or the ones that I'm going to primarily use, is an important consideration. The other thing to consider is the possibility that you don't have to worry about heat. Uh, this is why the Shrek PPC carrier, although its very armor is very light, is just a brutal, brutal tank. It is a, it is a mech killer. It is a mech hunter. Uh, the challenge with the Shrek, of course, is the battle value, while lower than um, a mech, right? Consider the fire output. Take an awesome mech and take a PPC carrier on there. The battle value is still high for the PPC carrier, but is significantly less than that awesome mech. Now, okay, it doesn't have the armor anywhere near that. It doesn't have the, the tonnage to level physical attacks, but it does have the ability to fire those three PPCs every single turn and not have to worry about heat management. It's also on a turret. So that's what we're going to look to leverage. Are there um, certain weapon combinations that we can utilize to maximum effect? The final piece. So if I was building, uh, let's say I'm going to build a, um, a mech hunter, mech killer, hunter killer unit, take my best tank commanders, I'm going to take three or four Shreks. Now, obviously, this is adjusted for battle value. I mean, look, I'd like to have five, right? But we need to spend resources elsewhere. I want two to three of whatever the core tank is going to be. This builds in redundancy. This builds in volume of dice, right? Because first I have to hit then it's got to be hopefully a good location on there. I've got to blast through a whole bunch of modifiers on your end. You're going to be running. You're going to be jumping. You're going to be getting hexes. I'm going to be moving, so I'm going to be automatically stacking plus one or plus two on there. Um, as we get closer to range, you know that those modifiers will come down, but I've got to hit you. So if I'm firing three PPCs, that's not bad. If I'm firing six, that's got some bite. If I'm firing nine, that has your attention even if you're in an awesome mech or you're in an atlas or you're in a stalker. That's going to bring some pause to there. Infantry, whether I select jump infantry or regular infantry, it's going to depend and it's going to match the type of tanks that I'm taking. The challenge with conventional infantry, of course, is they move one hex a turn. How are they going to stand up to that? Well, with the tanks, you don't have to move flat out. You don't have to move fast, right? The, the flanking speed on there. The infantry can keep up. But if I was going to have something faster, um, then I might go with jump infantry. 
based on the range, based on what I have, I also need some sort of suppression type tank. This is something that is going to immediately be laying down firepower as we're coming in and hopefully it's going to draw your attention. And those initial shots, those initial shots going in, you're going to go after these tanks. So I've got my Shreks, I've got my infantry, um, depending on the battle value, depending on what exactly we're doing. Uh, two great examples would be if I had a lot of battle value, I might take LRM carriers, although admittedly they're better parked you know, in some terrain and they don't really move. But then again, 20, 40, 60 missiles per carrier, that's got some bite. You know, and if I have other units to spot indirect, that's going to add some indirect fire. That's kind of nice. Um, but something like the Partisan, which is in the narrative an anti-aircraft type tank, and, and certainly you can use it for that if you're fighting, but I find the battle value is so cheap, and to get um, quad long-range auto cannons, that's going to put some DACA down on the table. So as those Shreks are moving in, as the infantry are moving with them, and as these um, Partisans are moving forward, they're going to start opening up. They're going to start shooting immediately on there. Hopefully, any long-range shots that you have, you're going to go and suppress on those partisan tanks. I might take motive hits. I might get taken out. But that frees up my core to continue of the Shreks pushing forward. So you're going to need something with a little bit of long-range bite pushing forward, pushing on there, moving up. The final piece or final thoughts on there. Um, naturally, cover is going to be important because I want to be able to not move and to kind of bring those modifiers down on there. Um, I'm going to move to a place optimally on the table as best I can because once I get dug in, I am not going anywhere. And we're just going to fight as best I can. From that perspective, if you combine arms your tanks and you interlock everything in there and you can, have the terrain in your favor of where you're going to engage. It's actually pretty frightening, and it is pretty easy to take out a mech or put some serious, serious hurt on mechs when we compare the battle value on there.